Before I get to the launch of the book, and I want to thank all of you who are participating. Look, folks, if there's a government shutdown for the right reasons, I'm all for it. I've lived through them before as part of the Reagan administration, before and after. There have been 21 of them since the 1970s, and we have survived all of them. But I am deeply troubled by what's taking place with five members of the Republican Party. These individuals are not conservatives. These are dead-enders. If you're going to shut down the government, you better have a damn good reason to do it. Again, I'm not even opposed to it. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a way out. You have to have something that can be accomplished, anything, to advance the ball of liberty. We've got a number of people who want to run for higher office. Some of them want to run for governor. Some of them want to run for senator. Some of them, this is the greatest opportunity to draw attention to themselves. Five of them. We're not even talking about the Freedom Caucus. We're not even talking about the 21 who held out for a period of time against McCarthy. As a matter of fact, I'm not even talking about McCarthy. When you have Byron Donalds and Chip Roy and Jim Jordan and other stellar conservatives who refuse to join these five dead-enders, that should tell you a lot. One of the things that the federal government is supposed to do, because we can't do it as individuals, the states can't do it, is to defend this country against foreign enemies. The greatest threat we face in terms of foreign enemies is communist China. And these five reprobates are endangering our country. They're endangering our country and they're pretending that they're principal constitutionalists when they are not, such as Andy Biggs of Arizona such as Rosendale of Montana, who wants to run for the Senate, I hear. I want to read something to you from our friend Gordon Chang a few weeks back. There's nobody better. In unprecedented moves, Chinese ruler Xi Jinping replaced the senior leadership of China's rocket force which is responsible for almost all of China's 400 or so nuclear warheads. These personnel changes are part of what is almost certainly the most ominous development of this time. It looks like Xi is contemplating using or at least threatening to use his most destructive weapons, nuclear weapons. In other words, China is planning to go to war. Xi sacked his rocket force commander and its political commissar, Neither has been seen in public since. The deputy, the commander, has also disappeared, along with a former deputy. At about the same time, the deputy commander of the rocket force reportedly took his own life in early July. So he's cleaned out the nuclear rocket force, top individuals and second tier individuals. He's blown them out. Periodically, there have been suicides of senior Chinese military officers, but the simultaneous removal of the top two officers of the rocket force is unprecedented. Also unprecedented are the replacements coming from other branches. The new rocket force commander is from the Chinese Navy. The new commissar moved over from the country's air force. American observers seem to believe that the sweeping purge was designed to target widespread corruption in the senior ranks, of the PLA. Chris Buckley, the New York Times, for example, called the personnel changes an unexplained shakeup that suggests suspicions of graft or other misconduct. Yet this explanation is partial at best. Almost all the senior generals had good reputations before their promotion, said a well placed source speaking anonymously to Hong Kong's South China Morning Post. Indeed, while the PLA senior office corps is known to be thoroughly corrupt, Xi Jinping has, during his decades-long rule, 
generally tolerated corruption among supporters. It's less likely that corruption was the reason behind the purge and the rocket force upheaval than a convenient excuse. The more likely explanation for the purge lies elsewhere. From the beginning of this year, Xi Jinping has been purging the military of officers opposed to going to war because he's preparing to go to war. Xi Jinping these days often talks about war and his regime is fast preparing for one. The Communist Party is implementing the largest military buildup since World War II. It's simultaneously trying to sanctions-proof the country, stockpile grain and other commodities, survey America for strikes and sabotage, and mobilize China's civilians for battle. The military indoctrination of children begins during the first years of school. And why would Xi Jinping opt for going into battle? China is failing fast. And Xi is being blamed. His malice inspired policies which favor state enterprises over private and foreign businesses are making severe problems even worse, especially troubling is Xi Jinping's relentless cutting of China's links with other countries. China's in trouble. Xi's only way out is to rally the Chinese people with an external crisis. Chinese doctrine is to threaten the use of nuclear weapons to prevent the United States and others from coming to the aid of Taiwan or other targets. During Xi's rule, Beijing has periodically made unprovoked threats to kill Americans by the hundreds of millions. And beginning in 2021, Japanese and Australians as well. Moreover, China has also warned it will nuke Taiwan, the self-governing island that Beijing considers its 34th province. In short, Xi needs obedient rocket force officers to execute orders to launch nuclear weapons, especially if the initial stages of a war do not go well for Chinese attackers. And as Richard Fisher of the International Assessment and Strategy Center told me, at a time when Xi is preparing for war, his changes in the PLA high command reflect his demand for senior officers who will obey war commands. That so many have been purged reflects disobedience in the ranks, expressed as a reluctance to go to war. The regime handed out a death sentence this year to former Air Force General Li Yazhu due to his continued opposition to an invasion of Taiwan. And he's not alone. The image that Xi Jinping is firmly in command of the Communist Party is belied by increasing evidence of instability in the ranks of the Chinese military leadership said Charles Burton of the Ottawa-based McDonnell Lauer Institute. The extraordinary purge of both the commander and political commissar of the rocket force suggests there's serious discontent within China's military with Xi Jinping. Burton, a former Canadian diplomat posted in Beijing, points to Xi's failing domestic and foreign policies, especially the cratering economy. They, they've got some problems, said uh, Biden. Bad things like starting wars. It's not clear that Xi has succeeded in taming the People's Liberation Army, whether the Chinese military will remain loyal to Xi if he orders an invasion of Taiwan, which could well fail disastrously for China, is now very much in question. There is, however, one thing we know. China is a ticking time bomb. And now the world has to wonder whether that device is a nuke. You know, I've read enough of history, even our own history, as well as world history, to know that the signals are always there. There might be a surprise attack, but Japan was building up for war before they attacked us at Pearl Harbor. Japan made alliances with countries that had already gone to war, like Italy, like Germany. China is plotting to go to war against us. It's as clear as day. We are not prepared. As a people, we are not psychologically prepared. Our all-volunteer military is not meeting its numbers. We are cutting R&D and capital investment and weapon systems. And we're at a time 
we should be significantly increasing our military muscle. Not to go to war on our say-so, but to protect us. Should we be attacked? What do you think Ronald Reagan would be doing right now? What do you think Donald Trump would be doing right now? We don't have a lot of time. We have no leadership out of the White House. We have appeasement, capitulation, a Manchurian president. And now we have five phony conservatives. These are not people we want to follow. These are not people who you should want to follow. Who just blocked the defense authorization bill. Even though it contained an 8% cut in non-defense, non-veteran spending. 8%. And embraced many of the objectives you and I have in terms of securing the border against illegal immigration. But it wasn't enough. They want all 12 bills or something like that. Communist Chinese sit there, Xi sits there, and he said, what would we do without Biden in the presidency, without Schumer as the leader of the, Repu- of the Democrats of the Senate? And what would we do without these five phony conservatives? who really have no plan. They spout off when pressed. They don't even make any sense. And they are not the people we want to follow and support. A government shutdown for the purpose of defending this country, expanding our liberty, slashing spending, yes, A government shutdown that arms our domestic enemies with propaganda and our foreign enemies with propaganda is unacceptable to me. These five are not the conservatives. You haven't even heard of them before, unless I mention their names here. They've done nothing significant ever. Rosendale of Montana. Ken Buck, Mr. Anti-Impeachment Inquiry. Andy Biggs, Mr. Anti-Convention of States. These are not conservatives. These are not constitutionalists. I call them kamikaze Republicans. Because they don't present you or me with any rational rational position that will strengthen our country slash spending and get control over the reprobates in this government the vote today took place 214 against 212 for we were three shy these five know that they can do whatever they want The Democrats voted against funding the military, and so did these five so-called conservatives. This is not the Freedom Caucus, which is made up of about four to five dozen members. This is not any caucus, except the caucus of the A-holes. China builds, China plans, getting closer and closer. We can't even get five Republicans to vote to get our military preparedness in place against an enemy that is building and getting stronger and stronger. 